What's up, everybody? Welcome back to a very special edition of the Commercial Kitchen Chronicles. Jason and I have very special guests, Matt. Matt is with Kason and does some really cool stuff over there. So what's going on, Matt? Hey, how's it going? Thanks for having me on today. Uh, my name is Matt Wheeler. I work for Kason Industries. Some of you may know uh, by the hardware that you are uh, seeing in the locations that you go out to service. So anything from latches, handles, and hinges, uh, LED lighting, and even the mechanisms that are inside the walk-in coolers um, that you guys are working on on a daily basis. We make those mechanisms that hold those walls together. Yeah, it's crazy to see how much stuff Kason actually makes. I mean, you know, when I first started, I always wondered, like, what hinges is, what hinges is? And I learned a quick, you know, the door handle to hands, the quick trick just to flip it over on the backside, and there's a Kason part number, and it saved my life from the get-go. So I always appreciate you guys putting those part numbers on there. I mean, it makes my life a lot easier, especially when it's small stuff. Yeah, definitely. Um, unfortunately, you have to take that thing off to, uh, to see that part number on the back. Um, and we continually work to make sure our brand is front and center. However, in a lot of instances, it's that OEM who we're supporting. So our name's not always front and center, but we're happy to make those other products work well and make that customer experience exceptional. Jason, you've probably done a lot of stuff, Case. I've seen your stuff out there in your uh, time in the refrigeration sector. Yeah, uh, Case and door, door closers and uh, handles and hardware for the hinges is the our go-to man you can get it at any parts house it's uh it's it's the way to go yeah yeah I, I, it's yeah the closers um i deal some of the lighting stuff i had no idea they made the, the little cams for the joiners um until we talked to you know matt a couple days ago that's pretty cool um just goes to show you they can do just about anything so what's uh new from case on i i seen you at napa um you have some pretty cool stuff um you had the little RFID door lock, the keypad, all that fancy stuff. You guys are coming up with some pretty cool stuff. Yeah, that was a 58E uh, electronic lock. And what that allows someone to do is to integrate their existing security system with their walk-in. And if you think about all of the different needs of security across the verticals that we serve from hospitals to cannabis to anything that needs to be secure and managed from the standpoint of, of digitally, um, that's a very good product for us from the standpoint of uh, being able to offer that. Um, integrated with that 48C inside release, which is a push bar release, very easy to access uh, or to exit the, the walk-ins with that. Think about all the times that somebody's needing to carry something out of that door. And so being able to bump it with your hip and, and get out the door is, is another great uh, feature that um, that system offers as well. It does work with any of our mechanical latches uh, or the majority of them. Um, and then we're also going to be releasing a uh, 57E, which is the um, which is the more common lock that f folks are used to seeing and or uh, servicing that is also integrated with that um, electronic uh, inside release. Uh, so they'll have that functionality with two different types of, of uh, latches. Nice. Sweet. Yeah, that thing was pretty cool. I liked it. Um, first time i've seen something like that you know in a, a walk-in cooler application i think it has a lot of good uh applications you know for like you said security um you know we do some restaurants where they have a, a beer walk-in cooler is inside of a regular walk-in cooler i see you know working off of that they keep liquor storage in there and stuff too so that's pretty cool so we uh we get to do a little bit of a tour on the factory and we are going to cover what what machine we're going to cover so there's a cobot well yeah, the um, we've we've started introducing cobots out on the assembly floor and in different areas in the in the plant, and with that capability, it's uh, you know everybody's had challenges with um, with um, labor these days. Um, it's allowed us to fill some some spots there and and help um, mitigate that issue. It allows us to um, uh, save space in different things applications that we're doing, um, and also. Um, increase our, um, our our product throughput. It actually we found that it actually will help pace our employees. You know, there's a lot of repetitive stuff that goes on out there, and it's not always fun per se, right? We're in manufacturing, but having a cobot in one of those cells, the employees will actually um, be driven or, or uh, keep pace with that robot. Then, and then we also know throughput, and we can use data to see where we have other deficiencies, and it can make changes. So again, we become more efficient manufacturer um but the consistency and the quality is, is definitely you know top of line thought process for us um, 
along with being able to continually produce the products that we need to produce so that we can supply our partners and the OEMs and the different manufacturers that need a lot of us to have or get them parts so that they can um, put their products out there. That's cool. That's cool. Well, how many different so you mentioned repetitive action. So I'm, I'm assuming that this also cuts down on people getting carpal tunnel and injuries and things like that too. Yeah, definitely. Our, our robots actually started um, in the, the late 80s, I think, and it started in our polishing, grinding and polishing. This is where parts come out of the die cast. Um, they go into grinding and polishing where um, there's these big wheels that you would take apart and you have to put it on that wheel and continually um, turn it and polish and grind parts off to make it into the finished product. So from a um, hard job, dirty job and things like that, we started introducing robots there and that allowed us to, again, um, inc increase our safety um, and improve employee um, retention. Because again, when you're in the South in Atlanta and it's a uh, middle of the summer and it's a hundred degrees out and you're, in a manufacturing setting you're doing a dirty hard job in the, in the first place it's not a good that's not a good combination so again the robots really came um in to help us there those robots are the ones that are in cells or in cages you can't get in there with them they don't care if you're standing there or not they're going to move through you the cobots that you're about to see that are on the um, assembly floor those those will stop if it comes into contact with anything it's not going to knock you over it's not a dangerous item um, very easy to program. Um, again, allows us to um, take a person out of a certain process that might be very um, redundant or, or um, easy to do for a certain step of the assembly process. And then again, keep that workflow, uh, workflow going. Also um, uh, allow us to put people on other places that, that require some uh, actual skill to, to do some of the processes that need to happen. So how many cobots do you guys have out there running right now? Um, the one you're about to see, we have about six or seven of those. Um, and again, those are the more simple ones. Um, we're working on one in the back that um, uses AI and actually will is a visual robot that it doesn't need to have things placed in um, a fixed bin or a fixed um, location. It can pick from a bin and it will recognize and use AI to say, oh, I, I recognize this piece. I can pick that piece out of a bin that's full of other pieces and then um, move it to the place it needs to be so that it can start it in the next assembly process. This is going to be for our panel fasteners. Um, and then we also have some other very advanced um, machines that uh, think of a, a carousel. And there are probably eight to 10 stations within this carousel. And again, loaded with cameras, rec AI recognition, learns what needs to happen for things to be put together correctly, can identify when a product is not uh, meeting spec for whatever reason that might be within the manufacturing process, so it can kick it out. And again, improves our quality, improves our um, rate of production, allows us to be more consistent with the things that we produce. That's awesome, because consistency is key in the matter, you know, everything we do. So. Be consistent with a great product, you you know, losses down, you know, revenues up. It's great. Um, you know, the robots have been a huge push right now in the kitchens. Um, you've been to some trade shows. Uh, there's robots on display. There's companies talking about, you know, selling robots, creating robots. I mean, it started off with, like, the little one that just go out picking up trays. Now we have full-fledged robots that will dispense fries into a basket. They'll dump the fries and they'll cook the fries. They'll dump them in a holding station. we got robots making pizzas. I mean, it's crazy what this world's coming to. And, you know, we got to get on board with the robots. Um, they're not going to go anywhere, unfortunately, the way lo uh, labor shortages are and everything else. We're going to have to learn how to fix them. Um, I know I'd rather fix them than let someone else come in my kitchen and fix them. So I'm going to try to learn them. I don't know about you, Jason. <laughs> I'm right there with you, man. Yeah. Anything new, man, it's, it's cool. I like, you know, I get bored easily. So as soon as I see something new and shiny come out, I want to be right there. I want my hands on it, man. <laughs> Yeah, and speaking of um, speaking of learning new um, equipment and things like that, um, I'm going to introduce you to, to Austin, who's one of our uh, manufacturing engineers, young kid. We've got three of those guys in here. They're all young. They're the ones that are changing the face of how caisson manufactures. It's very exciting, um, you know. And 
again, it's just it's interesting to see when you think about what they're actually helping Kason become. You know, we're we're a 97 year old company this year, and we've done things for a long time the same way. And thankfully, our ownership knows that we need to evolve as a manufacturer and are willing to you know put forth uh, dollars and time and and everything okay. necessary to make that happen. But it's in, it's very exciting to see these young kids and what they're doing for for Case on a hundred year old company. Yeah, yeah, that's really cool. You know, you know, twenty four years old or you know twenty three, twenty four years old, being an engineer, de designing and developing robots, and put them into applications. That's a that's a pretty cool job, man. You know, I'm not against college. I never said I am, but I said, you know, if you know what you want to be and there's an application for what you want to be, go for it. I mean, I'm not against it. I just I'm a proponent of the trades. I couldn't sit in school. Um, I'm not knocking anybody that did. I couldn't do it, man. I barely made it through high school. I'm not going to lie. Um, and, uh, but this job fits me well. I get to work with my hands. I get to tear stuff apart. And it's, it's, it's an everyday challenge. So I like it. So but that's really cool. Yeah, I would, I would say that for anybody who goes to any, whether it's technical college or you're, a, you know, a, even engineers, it's, it's, it's got a level of technical expertise, of course. But when you get somebody right out of school, somebody who invested in themselves and took the initiative and to show that seriousness and the craft they want to be in, they are full of ambition and ingenuity. And that's, you, you, your leadership has had the foresight to, to see that, that, you know, whether they, when it did it at 30 or 24, this, those are the people you want to bring in and you want to listen to them. Yeah, they're new, but they have a lot of ideas and a lot of ambition. And you want, you, sometimes you just got to cut them loose and see what they can do. And uh, you, you will find that there's a lot of, uh, a lot of ideas that's going to come from them. That's going to change your company because they want it. They want to succeed, but especially when it's their idea, they will be all in on it. Yes. And, not to not to knock our, our tenured employees because um, we've got another guy out there who is um, probably a 20 year employee, older guy like me, but he's working right alongside those guys. And again, talk about talk about a cool relationship and being able to um, have that old school knowledge and and understanding about how things work intermingled with um, new ideas and processes and ways to do things again. We pride ourselves on craftsmanship. There's guys that are back in the tool room that are still using hand tools to uh, fix our dies or um, mic out different things and depending on, on what needs to happen. But it takes that combination of both to really make things um, work well. And uh, again, so that's a, that's a great thing to see is, is our tenured employees working with these younger kids and guys that are that are making other things happen that we haven't seen before. That's a beautiful relationship right there, man. That's awesome. You know, you mentioned earlier, you know, about the robots and no one lost their job. They actually went on to do other things. They challenged themselves to learn new parts of the job and are actually excelling at it. You know, a lot of times people say, oh, robots gonna take a job. Well, you know, there's still going to be a job here. There's still something for you to do. The robot's going to make it easier. It's going to make it safer, make it more repeatable. Um, and I think that's the place, you know, where they really belong. Yeah. When when robots get introduced to to Kason, and I was not here at that time, but I've heard the stories um we're a family owned company privately held company um take a lot of pride in the uh, community activities that we do and the, the communities that we serve or that serve us they those families are the ones who help us be successful and so when those robots came in first in the polishing and grinding um those jobs weren't eliminated from the standpoint of people who used to do that we, we migrated those folks into other roles and it's the same with these new cobots um you know we're not looking to um Put anybody out of a job or anything we we rely on people i mean it's it's the core of our business right so um that is is definitely something that um you're very true or correct about and saying is that um we're, we, we've moved people into other positions when and if we have the opportunity to introduce robot into our our uh, assembly or, or production lines well that loyalty and commitment says a lot about caisson and and leadership there that you guys didn't you know, just replace people when you you found something else for them to do because uh, the the commitment that the the technicians and the employees, um, it's a lifelong one. You know, when you want to be somewhere and it's a career, not just a job. If they're there for 10, 15, 20 plus years, you know, it's it's definitely a great family relationship. It sounds like. Yeah, I um I came from corporate America, and um, I'd have a hard time going back to corporate America. Um, I was um, fortunate enough to uh, receive a call one day, and they were asking about. Uh, I needed a marketing guy. I thought about you. And I'm like, well, I don't want to drive an hour and plus minutes every day to work, but I'll come meet your guys. 
So I met the two owners at the time and it was a 360. Um, the passion that was there and the family feeling that was there was, was authentic. And, um, lo and behold, I, I've worked here now for the last six years and, um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't exchange it. So that's awesome. It shows. I mean, you love your job. I've seen you at, you know, this is a conference in NAF. I mean, you're always smiling, having a good time, talking to everybody, you know, doing your thing, marketing, uh, introducing people, you know, you're happy to record a segment on this of your products. You know, a lot of marketing guys don't know the products like you do. It just seems like you love the products you guys actually sell and make and you're, you enjoy, you know, showing them off. And it's, it's really cool. Well, I went, I went from uh, making communications, wire and cable look sexy to making hardware products for the retail or walk in and reach in uh, industry sexy. So, you know, I mean, I've, I've elevated my game here. <laughs> that's cool. That's cool. Yeah. So, you know, we're going to see some stuff out there. I didn't realize you guys made stuff outside of walk-in hardware and we don't need to get any names, but your guys' stuff's all over the place. Yeah. So the machine that you're going to see is um, actually it's set up for a truck body application. Um, so the handles that are on the sliding doors of a lot of vans that you might know from food service vans or, or food trucks to USPS to FedEx and US UPS. Uh, if you look at those handles on that sliding front door, those are case on products. So, um, those are around the world. Um, and again, you don't, you don't pass a truck without having one, uh, or two and including the inside latches as well. So. That's cool. That's cool. It just goes to show that, you know, you guys may start off one thing, but you can, you can do everything. Um, it's a, it's a pretty cool company. Thank you. Yes, <laughs> I agree. So you guys working on anything new or exciting or stuff you can't talk about? I'm sure. <laughs> um, well, one one product that um, that I helped introduce um, right before COVID, and then it kind of took a little downturn, uh, is a PoE product, so power over Ethernet. And when you think about a smart building, um, there's buildings that have kitchens inside those smart buildings, hotels, perfect example. Um, there's a uh, company, or sorry, a hotel called the Sinclair out of Texas that is a PoE hotel, so that all of the things that run that building um, are done through power over Ethernet, which is low voltage power and communication. So when you think about controlling that lock on that key card or controlling the lights or having sensors in a room or having the, light, the lights in the uh, walk-in cooler, you could effectively control that from your hand through an app that looks at all of the, um, all of the products or all of the uh, different um, powered products that are in your building and be able to control those, right? So, or have a sensor in the room where, um, oh, this room hasn't been used for 20 minutes. I'm going to dim the lights down, i.e. the software is gonna dim the lights because there's no use to, or no reason to use that electricity for that particular room. So again, we have an opportunity or, or a product that we can support POE smart building application. Um, I think that um, it will start to get some traction. Um, and again, from the standpoint of being first to market with something, um, there aren't other um, manufacturers for food service equipment that have a POE application yet. So that's a cool thing. Um, and um, being able to expand that across other products from um, the other LEDs that we use to um, thermometers and or uh, different uh, vents that we have uh, that are um, ventilation for your walk-in cooler or freezer, typically a freezer so that the cold air and hot air can equalize and not lock or um, Keep that door closed when the pressure until the pressure equalizes and allows it to open but um a lot of opportunities there so um poe is something that we're definitely looking into nice that's cool yeah that, that always drove me nuts when that that little ball in the vent freezes and you can't get the door open it's a bear to fight so <laughs> i can see that being a pretty nice one yeah that depends on um who's installed that vent actually and whether or not it's actually yeah. hooked up electricity um oops kind of a thing so <laughs> That's cool. So, Jason, you got anything else you want to talk about? Yeah, yeah, I've got a few questions here. I just wanted to ask about the history of Kason, where it's where it, where it originated from, and what were they making back then? Did they start in this manufacturing field of hardware? Kinda. So, uh, back in 1926 in Brooklyn, uh, it was a five and dime store. If you go on our uh, website and go to the About Us page, I think that picture's out there. But somebody asked. Um, 
the owner at that time, hey, can you make this? And refrigeration was starting to come into play then, right? And it was a hinge. And so that's where it started was, can you make this? And then the ball kept turning and rolling and they started to produce hardware for the refrigeration uh, industry or, or what was starting to, to come about in, in the mid 1900s, right? So in the night, in 1979, 80, Quezon transferred down to Newton, Georgia, where I'm at today, which is just uh, 20 minutes south of the airport. Um, and we've been here ever since, so about 45 years here. Um, and we're in the uh, Shenandoah Industrial Park, which is right off exit 47 of 85 South. And um, again, from the standpoint of one of the original people in this industrial park and, and you know, mainstay in the Newton area, um, we're very proud to be here. And, and um, I've had a lot of success in, in making that move and, and with the folks around here who have supported us. Nice, nice. So are you guys hiring? And if well, so, what are you what are you guys looking for? And whether you're hiring or not, but what are you looking for in a case on a career family member? Well, again, you think that you have to um, you have to have the right mindset um, when you come into a family owned business and depending on the role. Like for me, I'm the director of marketing. I do a lot more than a director of marketing. And that's not a that's not a bad thing but you have to roll up your sleeves and, and get after it in a lot of instances. And I'm not about doing anything. I'll help anybody at any time. But um, as far as, you know, the, the floor employees, the, the people who are in assembly or in die cast or wherever it might be, again, you got to look for that, the positive attitude, or at least um, a halfway positive attitude, because that's going to be, that's going to translate through all of your um, departments and, and everything. So like everybody looking for, that employee who's um, willing to come to work and put in a solid eight or 10 hours, depending on what the, the time frame is. And at the end of the day, know that they have somebody they can trust for um, income. And, and even in the, even the slow spots of, uh, of the industry that we're not going away. And from the standpoint of being around for 97 years, we've, we've seen it all from the standpoint of good times and, and bad times. Um, but that's one other thing that we pride ourselves on is, is, hey, we understand what we mean to you. Um, we're going to try to do everything in our power to make sure that you've got a job um, and we can both be um, survive, right? That's cool. That's great. You guys got a big party planned for that 100 year or still a little early for that? Honestly, that has, it just came up in the last week uh, about this, this start to plan for that. And and that's no, it's no small task either. You know, there's a lot of stuff that goes into it. It's the details that I'll get you. Right. Mm -hmm. And um, so I was around for the 95th. And so the hundredth is going to be something special. Um, in 2025, uh, NAFM is going to be in Atlanta. So we'll be 98 years old then. Um, we're going to have uh, probably some tours and things like that going on. So if you're looking for. Uh, I, I will be there. <laughs> we'll be there, man. Jason's coming up. Pat's coming down. This, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. That's cool. I expect, you know, you know, you offered a tour when I came up for HR. I just was busy and I couldn't come down. Yeah. I was in Atlanta. I felt kind of bad. You know, me and Jason mentioned maybe we should, you know, go to Atlanta for like show up on like a Thursday at night and then do Friday at the you know, facility and hang out with Matt and tour the place and get some footage and stuff. And it may be an option coming up. I don't want to figure something out. I won't surprise you with it, but you'll definitely be involved if we decide to do it. Let me know. I'm open. <laughs> Actually, anyway. Anybody who's out there that um, if you're going to be in the Atlanta area, again, 20 minutes from the airport, um, hit me up. Let me know if uh, you can swing by. I'll be glad to take you through the plant, show you what we're doing. People are amazed when they come here. They're like, oh, I didn't know you did all that, you know, and it's part of what got me as as a, to want to be an employee is I didn't understand. Oh, you guys do die cast. You actually smelt uh, zinc and then cast it and then do all of these other processes and then assemble it get it out the door here in Newton, Georgia. It's it's uh, very vertically integrated from the standpoint of we manage everything from when it's, again, that block of zinc till it's a finished product polished and ready to go in the box and ship to our customer. So it's really it's really cool. It's really impressive. That's neat. Yeah, that's, that's phenomenal, man. You guys show us, I mean, you have a lot of pride in your work and where you work at. Like you said, you know, you toured the facility and you knew it was a good place to be. And that's that means a lot man so i'm glad to have you on here and talk about it 
definitely. And then if you think about, you know, when, when people ask me, what do you do? And I'm like, well, we're a manufacturer for commercial food service hardware and truck body and industrial products. And so you think about you ever go into the grocery store and you look at that walk in door more than likely caissons on that or your favorite restaurant or anybody who has these exposed kitchens and you see that hardware. It's probably ours. I was, I was in um, NRA one year in Chicago, we walked into a sushi joint downtown somewhere and their whole back of their bar was uh, mahogany oak um, cabinet doors with our big 1245 chrome 1245s holding them and there was like a bank of 12 doors and it's just like yeah <laughs> it was yeah. really as a as a, as a, a high-end design element you know i mean again we've got a distinct look for some of our older products the 1245 48s and things like that but it really it really was nice to to see and and how they that um interior designer used those to pull out a, a nice design it sounds like you guys have been in the industry a long time, so it sounds like you guys are the originators, not the duplicators. Oh, I like that. You should be in marketing. Uh oh, uh oh, we're. I know what Jason's putting up for his tagline for this episode. <laughs> uh, that's great. Not those other guys. <laughs> uh, sweet. So, um, I don't know. Anything else you want to talk about or get off your chest or? No, I think uh, the main thing is is that. Um, Thank you to you two for the content that you put out. Um, again, I, I know what it means to drive content and um, I'm even probably guilty of not driving enough content for sure. Um, but you guys are doing a bang up job, um, getting the word out, just um, talking about the industry and any everything. You never know who it's gonna impact and, and help. So um, thank you to you two for, for what you're doing and um, the time that you're spending that people don't understand uh, is behind the posts that you do and and uh jason for your for your dj skills and selection of uh tracks kudos to that a lot of people love your music selection so pat that's going to be your next uh, uh toe, toe dip in the water is uh start pulling out some uh musical uh on the backgrounds of your uh posts i'm gonna start doing that pat did we first meet at fedcon no, I didn't get to go to FedCon because well, they were yeah. going to send me, but I was going on vacation with my family for two weeks, and it was like the weekend in between. But we so met at, at it a, was then it was that we first met, and I remember you were you were giving me the side eye because you didn't know how to you didn't yeah. know how I was what I was about because yeah. you were like, oh, I don't know if I want to hang out with you, buddy. But anyway, that was that was a fun fun we, meeting. We had a fun fun yeah. We toured the uh, the Country Music Hall of Fame. I don't know yeah. how I ended up down there. Um, I'd still tell people that somebody drugged me. I won't say who, but um, <laughs> it was a good time, man. It was just so many great people. You get the yeah. industry leaders. You have uh, owners, small business owners, big business owners. You know, my company's always there with people. Um, it, it's the manufacturers there. It's just so many different opportunities you're not going to get on a normal basis, you know. And I, I hope that eventually NRA becomes something more like that for the technicians to go and, you know, mingle because HR does a really good job with it, you know, promoting – you know, the technicians to be there and I'm hoping eventually we can get, you know, get NRA or NAPA to be more like that too. But um, if you get a chance to go to FESA, it's well worth it. Got me. So do you guys have service technicians of some sort that service that do in service? It's everything's manufacturer. And then, yeah, it's because, it, oh. because we sell to the manufacturer and, and, or we sell to service companies who do replacements. So, okay. We serve, or we sell to um, you buy from, whatever distribution house. So. Okay. Are you, so there's adjustable hinges. Are those you guys as it makes those? It's got the, yep. I yeah, love the, it on the show. It's a 1546. With the arm and you click, 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 click it back and it swings it closed or is that something? That's no, something that's, he's talking about the 1097 or the 1096 M, which are door closers. An adjustable hinge is a 1346. And that is, um, it allows you to, um, change the camber of the door uh, depending on which way it needs to rotate. Mm. Um, we have a good video that shows you how to adjust that online. And it's um, I, in case you guys ever run across it, you should watch it so that you understand the mechanics behind it. It's yeah. simple, but like, for instance, um, we've had people who uh, don't loosen the mountains. Yeah. Yep. If you don't, if you don't do that, it, it doesn't allow any movement and it just torques things up and it really causes an issue. So it's little details like that, or they adjust the door 
when it's closed as opposed to propping it open so that it can make that micro adjustment up or down wherever it needs to go. I had a brand new uh, cheeseburger place. Um, I won't mention any names, but they had that hinge and um, they needed a new sweep because it wasn't just properly when they installed it. So I was ordering a sweep and I was going to come back and adjust it. Well, um, another company came in and just took self tapper screws and just mutilated the door and those hinges. I'm like, you guys just destroyed like a $4,000 door and like, hinges that are made to adjust it. I was like, why did they do that? Like, well, yeah. they couldn't get to adjust. I'm like, well, because they weren't doing it right. I, I was like, I was like, I'm not even putting a swoop on here. Sign here. I'm walking away from this one. <laughs> I don't want my name on it. Yeah. Yeah. Again, um, there, there's a lot of cool stuff out there. By the way, here's the 1346 and the adjustment mechanism that's inside there. Yep. Yeah. This, this pin right here is what you rotate clockwise or counterclockwise and depending on if it's the top or the bottom hinge as to whether it pulls the back of the door in or pushes it out and so when you adjust the top one three turns you adjust the bottom one the opposite direction three turns typically don't touch the middle hinge if there's a three if it's a three hinge door i like that good explanation thank you for that uh matt so for anybody who needs Let's say someone's new in the in the field here, new tech, and they're having to adjust a door. Can they go to your website? And if so, is there a technical support or support on your website that they can find the videos you mentioned earlier? Yeah, if you go to the landing page of the 1346, mm -hmm. the adjustment video is there. There's also typically for our primary top line products, the, that 20% that makes 80% of our, our sales, there's always instruction sheets. Okay. Installation instruction sheets. So um, they should be able to find the information that they need uh, on our website. Um, worst comes to worst, they need to try to talk to somebody called a customer support uh, line. It's not a it's not a tech line or, or, or a technical support line, but we can get you the information that you need to get you through your, your issue. Well, those are great resources and that's great support. We appreciate that. Yeah, it's always great. Especially I love videos online, man, because Sometimes I'm working at six in the morning or six at night and you guys are in Georgia and you're not working. <laughs> hey everybody. I'm here with Austin today at Kason Industries. Austin is one of our manufacturing engineers and is helping change the way that Kason uh, makes their parts and uh, to improve them and uh, make our efficiency much better. That improves a, a wide range of things when it comes down to uh, making parts. Austin, uh, let me ask you this. How old are you? And where'd you go to school, Austin? I got a degree in manufacturing engineering at uh, Georgia Southern University. All right. And your your main responsibility here at Kason is what? Uh, pretty much my main responsibility is installing these cobots uh, for our assembly processes and areas around the plant as well. Um, yeah. And programming them and, and making them do what they need to do to finish their processes, yeah, right? pretty much full integration. Yeah. Awesome. So walk us through what this particular cobot does and where, where it starts and where it ends. Yeah. So where it begins is at the control panel. So this is where we program the robot, very simple to use. Um, we also select our programs here as well. Um, so pretty much from start to finish, we would select our program here, hit run. The assembly operator would be placing this part in this fixture. A sensor is read here to know that the part is present and the robot can continue. Once it does, it grabs the part, places it into the press, and out the packing. Awesome. So you're gonna run this program. All right. All right, Austin, so let's see how this works. Yep, so essentially we just hit the start button and it'll go about its cycle. So this particular product is a truck body product, now for the refrigeration industry. What's it doing right now, Austin? Right now it's gonna press the studs so that it can't come out behind the plate. All right, and then it's ready for its next process. Exactly. So from the standpoint of this particular process, why is the um, why is that particular process important to have a robot doing it? Yeah, so this is a very simple process. It doesn't take long to do. It doesn't require really anybody to be here. So instead we can put the robot here have someone go do another task to increase our efficiency and throughput throughout the plant. Cool. 
and then for this to do to happen again, the part has to be put into yep. to the uh, exactly. So we grab another part that's ready to go. Robot sees that signal. Goes about another cycle. Awesome. Well, Austin, I'd like to thank you for your time today. You and the rest of the uh, uh, manufacturing engineers are really making a difference in how uh, Kason is manufacturing today and becoming a, a manufacturer of the future. Thank you. Sorry about it.